Now, just when you thought that these pro baby murdering folks couldn't get any more ridiculous, couldn't possibly get to another level of insanity. Nope. Hold that thought. Wait till you hear these desperate attempts and hypotheticals. Um, I'm wondering what your stance are on abortion and how you respond to the Thompson violinist case. The second part, I'm sorry. The Thompson violinist case. How? Oh yeah, response? I've heard it. I mean, I'm happy, happy I'm to sure go through it, it again. Times, but yeah. but yes, under the, the under the hypothetical that will never happen, I'm happy to. That's be, what thought experiments are for. Right. I mean, but I don't need a, a thought experiment when it comes to abortion. But you want to tell people what the the violinist abstraction is? I'd sure. be happy to. So tomorrow morning, as will probably happen, you're going to wake up in your hotel room. Um, I'm going to be right next to you in bed, and you're going to be hooked up to me. Um, my blood is going to be going into your kidneys and then back into my body. And that's going to be necessary for me to survive. If you unplug me, I die. For how long? For nine months. Okay. Nine so, years. So, again, to play, it, to play this out, again, how, how did it happen, though? Oh, it was against their will. Oh, really? So rape? Sure. Okay. So that's only less than 1% of all abortions. So the thought experiment doesn't apply to the other 99% of abortions mm -hmm. where it's consensual sex. Do you agree? Okay. So the thought experiment is on the fringe of the fringe of any applicability. But under that thought experiment and that abstraction, yes, to be consistent, to save a life, I personally would give part of my kidney to save somebody's life for nine months. Yes. You couldn't leave the bed for nine months. Well, hold, pregnant, pe pregnant women are not bedridden. Some are. Uh, very rarely. Uh, my... So I, I don't know what you're talking about. I mean, uh, if, you go into, if you go into preterm labor around like 25 or 26 weeks, maybe with like magnesium treatment, you go to okay. bed rest for three to four weeks. Okay. Do, sure. Are it's, you familiar with it's that? It's not or? a perfect analogy, but it's not a good analogy at all. But it's so, a pretty good one. So let perfect, me ask you a question. When does life begin? Why is that? I. That's impossible to define. It's impossible really? to define. I think so. Life you, is very abstract. Are you are you alive? I'd like to think so. Okay. Are the people around you alive? As far as I know. Okay. What gives you that belief? Intuition. Intuition, not Intuition. the fact that they're breathing or we could take their pulse rate or their I heart mean, is working. They have brain waves, consciousness. We can go all the way to idealism. Like, what if you can't know anything for sure? Okay. Can I can I ask you this? You don't. You, you're way overthinking it. Let me be. Let me be honest. Maybe like, I am. Maybe I am. I, I think so. But Do you think if somebody, not you, hooked themselves up to someone in bed? said they were going to commit to the nine months. Do you think they had the ability to People do to that all the time. It? It's called being a kidney donor. It's so different. Millions of people give away kidneys, livers, all the time for people that need it. Strangers, in fact. Do you think or they're morally obligated to do so? Are you, if, so let, let, me, let me give you another example. If, I, if you're stranded on an island and one of your organs that you do personally do not need to survive could help that other person on the island you're with, two people on an island, sure. you are morally obligated to give one of those organs to that person so that they could survive. Otherwise, it would be at least manslaughter, at worst murder. Yes. Okay. Well, I think it's just a difference of opinion at that point. I think you'd be a very, very good person to do so. Maybe even just... Okay. So we agree. So there's a morality. So, so we have now built a good... Yeah. in sacrificing something you might not need but can inconvenience you to help something, somebody else. Mm -hmm. So therefore, is the inverse bad? <laughs> if it's good to sacrifice part of what right. you don't need to help somebody else, is it therefore bad not to do that thing? I think you, you have a right to your, own, to your own stuff. Like you were saying with socialism, you have a right to your own stuff and if you give it to help somebody, you're a very nice person for doing so, but I don't think you're morally obligated. Well, you said to good before. Nice and good are two different words. That's okay, though. But so uh, if you have, let me ask you another question. It's just another hypothetical. You happen to be in a deserted town. Somebody's starving to death. They haven't eaten for 30 days. You happen to have, you know, two Big Macs. You really want them both, and you, that Big Mac will save their life. If you don't give that Big Mac and they starve to death, what kind of a person are you? Kind of a shitty person. So, so how is that any different than somebody saying, hey, a woman saying, I'm pregnant, it's not what I wanted. I might have to go through nine months that might not be the easiest nine months of my life, but another human being gets to enjoy the beauty of life. I think you can be an ass without doing anything morally wrong. Does that make sense? And at um, this point, I think we just Okay, differ. yeah, I mean, being a jerk and being right. evil are two different things. I would agree. But terminating a baby is not being a jerk. That, fetus. So what does fetus mean in Latin? I don't speak Latin. Yeah, little human. Oh. So, the I'm, little the little human. It just the, they what does use, it mean in English? What does fetus mean in? What does it mean in English? Yeah, little human. <laughs> Unborn baby. 
right. So the reason people use fetus is because it makes themselves feel good. Okay. Because they don't want to use the word baby because they want to try to cloak the horror of abortion. So they say, oh, it's a fetus as if it's like a rhinoceros or if it's like a giraffe. No, it's the same species as a human. It's just not as big as you are or as advanced as you are. So it feels better to be able to terminate that being. But I could see you're coming after this in a good way. If I were to ask you a question, should we try to limit suffering on this on, on Earth? Obviously. Okay. So if I tell you that the majority of abortions that occur, the baby feels pain, should we probably stop doing that? I... F well, it's not that simple, obviously. You're making it simple because obviously giving birth causes a lot of pain too. And if you try no, to- No, I'm making the complex simple because it's actually not that complex. Okay. Here's what college does is it makes the very simple moral questions so complex that you have to keep on borrowing money you don't have to keep on getting these degrees to overthink good and evil that somebody on the side of the street can easily say murder is wrong. It, it doesn't take that much like deep and profound thinking. I wasn't overcomplicating it. I was bringing up the reality that someone who gives birth goes through pain. Well, you they, went on a they, tangential speech about college, which I well, didn't do they, what we were talking about. They do go through pain, but it's, you know, thanks to modern medicine, it's not as much pain as it used to be. So you, so can, pain. you can get an epidural. It's also one out of three of births in this country are done by cesarean sections. So, but, uh, so good. Thank you. I, I, any other questions or? Do you want to fry? Uh, no, I'm good. Thank you. <laughs> I am a simple man, y'all. I love me some good old basic common sense. And maybe you're one of these folks that likes to complicate things and twist it up to make it sound fancy, but I, we keep things simple around here and the truth will never be out of style. And that's why I think that Captain Kirk, he did a great job in that debate and God bless him for defending the lives of these innocent baby blessings. And this may come as a surprise, but I have to give that young man some credit too, because unlike most of these radical libs that we see Charlie debate on these campuses time after time he actually seemed somewhat open-minded to change and he was calm he actually tried to have a conversation and for once we didn't have to see someone going berserk and throwing a fit you love to see that even though those clips do make for some very entertaining content I would much rather two people be respectful and actually have a discourse where you can possibly learn something instead of just hearing yourself talk but obviously he was still way off in his thinking because I don't care how extreme of a made-up scenario that you make or whatever fetus zygote propaganda that you try and label a baby, nothing will ever change the moral fact that murder is a sin and is wrong. The unlawful premeditated killing of one human being by another will always be atrocious. And yeah, but, but rape, but incest, horrible and disgusting in all cases, a million percent. I'm sorry that you had to suffer that pain and trauma, but in the rare circumstance where pregnancy results from one of those things, you can't take that out on the baby. First off, it it wasn't the child's fault, so no blame should be placed on them whatsoever. Second, what about that little human being's pain from someone literally ripping them apart via women's health care from their mama's womb? That's just as evil, if not more so, than what that sick and twisted creeper did to you. At least you survived and still have a future ahead of you. That same thing can't be said for the 60 plus million babies that have been deleted off the face of this earth since the Roe v. Wade. Who knows how many happened before then, but they will never get the opportunity to fall in love to laugh, to make a positive difference in this world. None of that stuff. And what's really sad is that most of the choices to murder weren't from women that endured a violent crime. Those account for less than 1% of all abortions like Charlie touched on in the video. That means that 99% of the time, it's irresponsible, selfish women that go through with that irreversible decision. Whether the condom broke, they didn't use one, they claim they aren't ready, whatever it may be, there's no excuse good enough to justify taking a life. None whatsoever. Whatsoever. You are ready enough to lay it down like grown folks do, so you need to become ready enough to raise that child or give another family the ability to do so through adoption. Your mama let you live and didn't take the easy way out or you wouldn't even be here, so show some awareness and do the same with your child. Ladies, contrary to popular belief in this woke society, it's not just your body, so it's not your choice. It's not health care. It's not your right or some form of empowerment. It's a lie that will leave you with regret for the rest of your life and 
it will negatively impact the entire world for as long as it remains legal. So we need to get things set up to where it's illegal in every state for every reason, period, end of story. That's how I feel about it. I'm never going to change my mind on that. And you may disagree, but that doesn't change the truth of the matter. There's no valid excuse that justifies sin. Whether you believe it or not, God created all of us and knit us together in our mama's womb. And he don't make mistakes. The almighty gets everything right the first time around. So everyone needs to recognize and honor that. If you do make a mistake, which is inevitable because we all make them, that's just life. That's just part of being a member of the fallen human race, unfortunately, going back to Adam and Eve when they ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in the garden of Eden. When we do fall short though, repentance needs to be reached with genuine remorse for those poor decisions that we've made. And we need to stop doing it from then on out and put complete faith in Jesus Christ so that the Holy Spirit can guide us in righteousness moving forward until Christ returns someday. Amen. I know not everybody believes in Jesus, but that's not my fault. You better put your trust in him. You better pursue the way, the truth, the life, because without him, there's no way to the father. There's no way to heaven. So in the meantime, I'm going to continue to use my voice and whatever resources that the Lord has blessed me with to continue to fight against the wickedness of abortion. And I pray that y'all do the same as well with whatever role that you play in society. You don't have to be a YouTuber. You don't have to be a influencer, a public speaker, none of that. You can do the best that you can to promote and enhance change in the right direction, in the righteous direction with whatever that you, that you got, with whoever you are, whatever voice that the Lord has put in you. And we cannot allow these facades, these masquerades about what murder actually is. Abortion is murder. We can't keep allowing people to cover that up. Call it what it is. I'll stop right there because I, again, I get very heated and passionate and this could go on for, for hours, I promise you. But I'd love to hear what you think about all this. Drop a comment below. Let's keep this conversation rolling. Don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe if you're not already. Ring that notification bell so you get notified anytime I post a new video. If you like what I'm doing over here and you want to show a little extra love and support, make sure you go check out our website down below in the description section. That way you can get all the awesome shirts you see me wearing in every single video. They're all made by my beautiful wife. This one says created with a purpose. It has it on the chest and on the sleeve. It's based on Ephesians 2 verse. 10. I like mine a little baggy, so it seems a little extra room to move and groove, but we got all different sizes ranging from itty bitty extra small to big, big and hefty 5X, a bunch of colors, different designs, all of that. I'm sure you can find something that you like or a great gift for someone that you love. Outside of that, you can always join the Gibson family here on YouTube and become a member. You can buy me a coffee. You can join the Patreon family. All those links are down below as well. By no means do you have to do any of that. Just showing up and allowing my freckle face to rant at you for a few minutes. I am greatly appreciative. I love y'all. I cannot thank you enough. Until next time, I'll be praying for you. Godspeed. I'm gone.